Morning guys, how are we doing? Hope you're good. Welcome to the morning JB show on Wednesday. I want you to, number one, make sure that you engage with me. So as soon as you come on, please start hitting the blue like button, thumb button, and then just comment that you're here. Let me know where you're from. Let me know what you're up to. If you're on the podcast and listening on the podcast, please make sure that you re review the podcast for me. Share the podcast with someone. Uh, it's important that we get this message out to people. So, been dry for 44 days, and it's the longest probably period I've been dry since I was on the booze as a kid. Now, that doesn't mean I'm an alcoholic, all right? I'm far from it, but... I consistently turned to alcohol as an emotional escape um, when dealing with a large amount of pressure, mainly from work, mainly from trying to work for myself. And um, the worst part of my life in terms of drinking was when I came out of the military, um, trying to cope and deal with the stresses of coming out of the military and into to civilian life was gut-wrenching. So a lot of the time, um, in my darkest days, I would probably get through like a bottle of spirits a day um, and be smashing it away and uh, just try and drink myself to, a, to be asleep, really. Um, so I've had had I have had really dark sort of days with booze, but I'm a long, long, long way away from those days. Um, and what I was doing um, was just building up the drinking as, as I went along. Greg, how's it going? So um, around Christmas time, we had about a 10 day period where <clears throat> we were off. Again, we were off um, from work. And what I found is that at least seven of those days I was drunk on the sofa, and that was Christmas just gone. And um, it culminated to the point where we got to New Year's Eve, and it was about half past 10 on New Year's Eve, and we were just with all of our closest friends and family. And I was sitting on a sofa watching the room spin, thinking how am I gonna survive another hour and a half? Because I was completely pissed out of my face. And I was doing my Instagram stories, and I looked back and I could hear myself slurring so bad, so embarrassing. Um, and then the next four days, I struggled massively um, with my brain hurting, my body hurting, my organs hurting. And I was like, what are you doing? Like, what the fuck are you doing? And I was trying to process it, as I do. I don't process anything and wonder why the, why the hell I was doing it. And, um, you know, I felt really embarrassed. And my boy kept on saying, oh, you're drunk on the sofa again, Dad. And I was like, oh. My God, fucking kill me now. Um, and I realised that I was so stressed out and overwhelmed because I've been trying to build up the dad's coach, trying to build up this brand, trying to do everything. That it finally just, you know, when I stopped at Christmas, all my emotions, my coping mechanism, my chimp, my brain went to the bottom. You know, I was like, oh, I'm gonna have a couple of drinks here. I wasn't even measuring my shots. I was just literally like that. <laughs> and then filling it up and then maybe putting a little bit of lemonade in. And got through a large amount of alcohol. And I thought, fuck it, enough is enough. And so I decided to go 12 weeks dry to break the habit and break the mold. And I feel mass, so much better already. So much better already for it. Um, I feel clean, I feel less bloated. My thought process is so much better. I'm not irrational, I'm not ratty, you know. And it's been tough because in the last 44 days, there have been challenging days. Again, whenever you, if you work for yourself, you'll know building up the business is not an easy process. Um, wondering uh, why things are happening, this and that, it's just stress, stress, stress. And my instant reaction in January was to always look for the bottle was always to go for a drink do you know what I mean have a drink um have a gin you know kind of like smash that down and make relax me and I see a lot of people do this with cigarettes they grab a cigarette and I can see how relaxed they're looking while smoking um and they obviously use that as their meditation as their calm which is obviously not great so emotional habits and emotional actions 
are something that I feel that we use to comfort ourselves away from the stress and realities of the real world. Okay, especially some of the, it depends what people's stresses are and how much stress people can handle. You know, a CEO of a company will have a large amount of pressure on him. A business owner will have a large amount of pressure on them. You know, it could be that there are other jobs that you think are not stressful, but are stressful to others. We all have our own variation of how our mind works and our state of mind. And that interprets whether we need to have a coping mechanism in place to result to emotional habits. So as well as drinking, there are other, um, other, other, other areas or other emotional habits that we fall for. Um, morning, everyone. How's it all going? So not only do we have drink, we have food. Uh, and I've fallen short of this before as well. When you just feel so emotionally battered, you just go, fuck it. And you end up going to McDonald's or you grab a Chinese or you grab a kebab. Do you know what? Every now and then there's nothing wrong with having a takeaway and treating yourself and kind of saying, do you know what? I'm just, I'm just going to have a Chinese. You know, work really hard. I'm going to have a Chinese. The problem is, is when we don't have any control over this and we end up maybe ordering two, three takeaways a week and we use that as our emotional stimulus to make us feel better. It's like a temporarily, temporary hit. And you know what, I'd be like, fucking yeah, get that Chinese in, give me that fucking beer. And that becomes a habit. You get into the habit of doing that. So as soon as your mind realizes that you are stressed and that you are overwhelmed and that you're quite emotional and that you feel like down or you're in a rut, your brain, you, you've built up this trigger in your head, this habit that allows you to go, yes, it's okay for it to have a drink. Yes, it's okay to have a takeaway. So guess what, you order them in and you keep doing it. And like anything with a habit, you fall down a slippery slope, down a rabbit hole, and it's very difficult to break. Other things that you can look at are your behaviour, your behaviour to the people that you love. So quite often in the past, what I've done when I've been stressed out, I've got into the habit of blaming other people. So blaming my partner, blaming my children, being just a real shithead, or just being really shitty around the area. I know that that was one of my weaknesses. I knew I know that's one of my um, <clears throat> that used to be one of my coping mechanisms. It would be to lash out, be short with everybody, and blame everybody else. It's everybody else's fault but mine. Does that does that make sense? Um, and that's something I worked on. I processed that. And there's two different trains of thoughts in your head. There's the chimp, which is the aggression or emotional monster which is what the person that lashes out. And then is your logical thinking saying, it's not their fault. They're your support process. Why are you shouting at them? So we have two different concepts. You then have your chimp that says, fuck it, I'm gonna have a drink and take away. You then have your logical side that says, no, that's not the answer. It's a temporary fix. So when it comes to you and your emotional habits, and you're trying to develop your emotional habits, one of the things that I learned to deal with is processing the information and the environment I was in at the time. So do I really need this drink? Do I really need to go betting to deal with everything? Do I really need to lash out? Do I really need to go and get that takeaway? How can I control my emotions better? How can I make myself feel better? And, and I'm just gonna share some of the things that I do. I'm not saying they're right or wrong. The uh, the variation depends on the variant depends on you as an individual. So for me, what I do now is that when I'm in a bad, I'm quite emotional. I'm stressed. I literally I bought these look post-it notes. Okay, and I simply simply write down on there what the beef is, what the problem is. Question myself. Why am I feeling like this? And I try to get to the origin of the problem. So instead of just hiding and burying my head in the sand with the problem, with a bottle of booze or a takeaway or lashing out and blaming everyone else, I figure it out. And I set a 10 minutes on my stopwatch. I do 10 minutes. I put on some relaxing music on YouTube and I just listen. Or one, something that's really, really, really good on YouTube, I put on The Sound of Rain. And it just like drowns out everything else. And it just allows me to process my thoughts. And I literally just fucking brain dump on these post-it notes like this, writing down. 
and I try to deal with it and, con uh, and the process of it. And since I've stopped doing that, it's allowed me to want the urge to have booze anymore. It's allowed me to want to stop emotionally eating. It's allowed me to stop lashing out at everyone, okay, and being short-tempered with everyone. It's identifying the problem and dealing with the problem rather than burying your head and hiding, which is what a lot of, I feel, emotional um, habits do. They're a temporary hit for you. They make you feel great for a couple of minutes, and then guess what? You wake up the next day, your guts are in bits, your head's in bits, you're all over the place, you feel depressed, you feel even worse than you did because you feel you've let yourself down. And all of these other emotions comes in, so you go, fuck it, let's do it again. Do you know what I mean? It's like a vicious roundabout, and the only way to do it, deal with it is to face up to it. Bang, face up to that. And make sure that you are dealing with it. Like, deal with it, process, ask yourself the question. You've got all of this negative energy in you, all of this negative stress and overwhelm that's going on in here, and you need to deal with that. So we need to get it out of the body. If we ignore it, it will sit there. If we deal with it, it will leave, all right? So guys, um, I'm gonna finish up there. Thanks for listening. If you are on a podcast, please just literally take a second now to um, review it. It takes a second. If you're watching on Facebook, please do just click share. Make sure you've clicked like. I really appreciate the time. Have a great day, and I'll catch you all soon.